Yellow. Off we go then. Match day three of 2026. World Cup qualifying in Africa is underway. And Togo will be looking for a dozen games unbeaten here at home in Lome. And they get the first attack going. Team Maylaka, proven goal scorer internationally, but nevertheless, Kevin Denke has scored their only goal in the current World Cup qualifying campaign so far. He leads the attack as expected. And that's Bebu will be one to watch out for as well on either side of him. Eliuj Plaka, though, today, who was expected to start on the other side of the centre-forward. This is uh, Kouachuel. Doing well as well, getting to the byline. Tackled, though, by uh, Loic Basile. And it'll be a first corner to the away side. In fact, it was... Uh, Kevin Boma, who uh, got the tackle in. So then, corner taken by uh, Kouachuel, dealt with initially by Togo, who had really everybody back, and it made the uh, escape from defence almost impossible. Possession easily taken back by South Sudan. who have uh, never qualified for either a World Cup or for a Africa Cup of Nations as a singular entity. Of course, Sudan have a great history when they were one nation all the way back in the early days of CAF. That squeeze through. You can see the grass is quite long here. The ball is... Uh, not rolling, it's almost like it's wet. Which is not ideal for passing sides, but uh, you see there, the way it just slows down. So there's a, a scope here to be able to send balls through and for the fast runners coming forward and being able to pick that up behind the defence. Togo on the attack forward. That one, though, slightly overhit. Togo coming into this match, having uh, lost to uh, beat Namibia and uh, drawn with Sudan. Great ball forward, but uh, that's a poor attempt at a shot by Tito Adong Lazarus Okello. Appearing for the second time and starting his second game as well. Yet to get off the mark, though, in this qualifying campaign. He plays his football in uh, Pekan. Togo on the attack. Cheer for Khalid Neri, who's regarded as one of the attacking dangers for this Togo side. Joseph Data, who has uh, incurred the wrath of the referee there. Second appearance for him as well, second start too. For the man who uh, plays in Uganda at Express. 
Pogo try it down the right-hand side instead. Almost five minutes gone, yet to see a shot at goal, but Togo and South Sudan trying their best to get forward. He has Boo Boo. Manages to get the ball into the middle, but uh, picked up by Jenad Juma. Up again by Neri. Trying to come back inside and manages to get past Charles Umasila. Crowd are loving it at the moment. It's a decent ball in and a terrific piece of defending in the middle by Fredon Rashid Tua. Really needed to get there as well with Ilas Bebu bearing down on goal. Hear the crowd. You see there, Babu, known for his pace and his dribbling skills and an ability to create chances. And has been uh, good for Hoffenheim in Germany's top flight. He's one of the few who plays that high up in this side. Out by Peter Maker, the captain of South Sudan. One of those who uh, helped get the clean sheet in the last game. Throw coming up from Maruf Chake. <laughs> Changes his mind at the last minute and instead plays it short. Here's Basile. Nice little move inside of Data. However, good uh, pressing by South Sudan. Forces them back into their own half. Captain Romau out wide and then. Needs some movement forward, does uh, Chake. Karim Demane down the uh, flank, and it'll be a corner. Good work by Khalid Neri again. Unbelievable noise. And if this can't lift Togo, nothing will. Corner kick for them. Khalid Neri will take it. It's a decent one into the box. It's skewing around all over the place. And in the end, South Sudan are happy to sneak it behind again for another set piece from the same side. Good delivery. Needs another one just like that. See there, Kevin Bowman, the tall centre-back, is ready in the middle. In it comes again from Neri. Again, more or less the same place. Really well met, though, by Rashid Tour. He's been hit as well and has gone down, and the referee is uh, requiring help for the Togo number three, Loic Besile. There's the South Sudanese man also down. Not sure we want to see this again. Well, I'm sure they actually did hit heads in the end. It was more shoulders. Maybe just the shock of uh, the collision. Blood. Oh, it's like ringing in the ears for both players. Actually, two of them back on his feet. South Sudan have never appeared at a major tournament in an independent country, but. Uh, well, a win today would certainly change their fortunes in the group. Bright Stars not expected to really make much of a splash in this group, but it's a very strong one containing the likes of Senegal, Democratic Republic of Congo and Togo themselves, although they're not quite the entity they were in the middle of the noughties. And Emmanuel Adebayor was at his pomp and height and one of the biggest names in world football.
Togo known as the Zepevier, which in English is the Sparrow Hawks, and didn't qualify for the last Africa Cup of Nations, which took place after the first two matches of World Cup qualifying. They did finish off the campaign pretty well, though, which uh, augured well for what's going up now. They got eight points in the end, drawing two, winning their final two matches, though, so you can see how badly they did early on in the campaign. But they beat Eswatini 2-0, and then claimed a fine 3-2 win over Cape Verde, who are one of the big nations coming through now, the little uh, bunch of islands off the west coast of Africa, who are becoming quite a force on the continent. Cape Verde are in Group D, by the way. They're in a three-way tie. Talk about tough groups. Cameroon and Libya are also top there. The Indomitable Lions and Bruce Sharks have a crunch meeting, though on Saturday in Yaoundé. And the Islands team following that up with another key clash at home to the Mediterranean Knights of Libya in Praia. A few days later. That group also has Angola looking to get into the fight at the top as well. They face Eswatini at home before welcoming Cameroon to Luanda on Tuesday. Looks like everybody has recovered from that little uh, clash of heads and uh, we're all ready to get set to go again. I think it's going to have to be obviously a, uh, a drop ball and they're deciding who should get it. Maru for... Chake thought that it perhaps should be for Togo, but uh, the referee, I think, is going to decide that uh, South Sudan are going to get things underway once more. Here's Peter Chol. Peter Chol, one of those who has played in all three games so far of World Cup qualifying, although this is his second start. He was a substitute in the last one. be a throw in Good interception there by uh, the captain Alexis Romau <laughs> Stephen Mensa organizing his troops and they've done well that ball is cleared and the chance for a counter-attack that ends there though good challenge no uh, foul though so just the throw in picked up by Bebu he races forward and the defenders pick it up again with the captain Romau Togo went to the 2006 World Cup, which was in Germany, but uh, unable to pick up a point. Three games, three defeats. But it gave them a taste of what's to come, and uh, that is what they're trying to get back to. It is so hard, though, to get out of African uh, qualifying, but at least this time there's a bit more to aim at. The biggest ever World Cup is on the horizon, and Africa will have nine places at the top table, which is almost double what they've been used to. Doesn't make it any harder to get out of this group, though. Poor ball into the middle. South Sudan pick it up and start to come forward themselves. They've made a confident start already, the men in green. Toa decides to go back to the goalkeeper, Juma. He decides to take the direct route. Kept in on that far side and picked up by Okello. Out wide once more from uh, Uma Charles. And in the end, it all goes all the way back again to Juma, and he does the same thing again. Knocks it back to almost the same place, but head of forward this time from a Togo head and another. Illegally that time, though. Roger 
Oholu, the man who has been uh, penalised. Thirty years old now. This is only his eleventh uh, appearance for Toga, the man who plays in Tunisia with Esperance, one of the giants of the club scene on the continent. Well, that's a uh, free kick. A little bit of dancing there being performed by Jackson. Here it is. Nice little spin on Kevin Denke. That's a nice ball, and the pitch will slow it down. I told you, you send those balls over, they will slow down once they start rolling on the pitch, and that was a great example of it. It's good pressing, forcing Togo back. They're going to need a lot more of that as well, South Sudan. being made by Kojo Aziangbe. Nice movement. Aziangbe, first shot, but it just, well, it started off wide and then just kept on going wide off his instep. Just 20 years old, the man who plays in Ukraine for Zoya Luhansk. Yet to score an international goal, this is his sixth appearance for the Sparrowhawks. Well, at least somebody's had a shot, so 17 minutes for the first shot to come in. Maybe that will encourage the home side to come forward a bit more. That's going backwards, though, to uh, Mensa. Steven Mensa, who plays for the Hamburg Reserves. Another youngster, only 21 years old. It's only the fifth time he's appeared for Togo. South Sudan, uh, as they take this uh, goal kick, they've uh, been a little bit under par of late. Shared the points in a goalless draw against Sao Tome and Principe in a friendly last time they played. Goals is always going to be the problem for them usually the problem for most countries, whichever confederation they come from. It all starts with a good defence, but unless you can score at the other end as well, there are too many good attackers around to be able to just defend for 90 minutes. You've got to have a little bit of a spark as well. This is Kevin Bomer. Feeds it into Bebu out wide down the line from Neri. Turned by Denki. Bebu again feeds it out wide. The ball looked to come into the penalty area but didn't make it over the first defender. They can have another go though. It's a little ball down the line but. Uh, not able to be collected, and it will be a goal kick to South Sudan. Sign of the crowd calming down yet as uh, Togo try to come. That nearly worked. That was the best looking passing move of the match up to now. Just fell apart at the last moment.
Starting to get bedded in now with 20 minutes on the clock. Still Togo nil, South Sudan nil. Togo on the attack though, and a chance for Bebu. Scuff the shot though. 30 years old now, Bebu. And a really good finish to the season for Hoffenheim, involved in four goals in their final two games against Darmstadt and in that incredible win against Bayern Munich on the final day. Went 2-0 up in that, but it was Bebu who uh, set up Andre Kramerich, the Hoffenheim legend, for the 2-2 goal before Hoffenheim went ahead in the final part of that game. Bebu turning up 32 times, scoring seven times and five assists for Hoffenheim. Romal forward into midfield. Sheke continues the progression. Like um, Agbozo has been playing. There he is, the number two. Wasn't supposed to be here. First shot comes in, and it skews just past the post. Getting closer, Togo, as we hit the halfway point in the half. Nice passing again. And the shot from Azingbe. He's already had one chance. Hits this really well. The man who plays his football in Ukraine, just going wide, brings up a corner kick though. Not the best delivery, doesn't make it over the top of the first defender. Another good ball in though, punched away by Gennaro. Good piece of pressure this by uh, Togo, South Sudan. Get the decision though for a foul, just a little bit too much there. Those are coming on in the 16th minute when Basile had to go off. He's uh, Asian Champions League football for Al uh, Kwawa Al Joya. That's why he's on at the moment. Doesn't get that much outings though for his club side. It's a fellow who went down under the pressure from the substitute. for Police FC. Experienced international as well for South Sudan. Regular in the side is Tito Akello.
25 minutes on the clock then Togo nil South Sudan nil in this I say this crucial World Cup qualifier they're all crucial really but uh, when South Sudan they've not fallen so far behind yet that they can't come back so it's important that they get something out of this game just three points between the six teams in this group which just shows you how tight it is all the teams in it have scored at least one point South Sudan trying to improve and uh, Nicolas Dupuis 56 year old Frenchman Another throw in. <coughs> Corner kick again. The pressure now beginning to be dominated by the attacks from Togo they've been camped in this half now for the last five minutes in comes the corner kick once more then dealt initially with a set piece from Neri well that was defensive back to the uh, captain Ramal well worked in the end though Togo still on the offensive. Another throw in. Look at that come. time coming from Emmanuel Lucky, 22 year old midfielder. Wild cross this time though. Flying across to the other side. Lucky, by the way, making his second appearance in World Cup qualifying. This time around, that is. Also involved in four games in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifying, which was ultimately unfruitful. Finally, South Sudan managed to cross the halfway line. It's going to be a brief uh, passage of possession, though. Neri, high press. Good play from Coadjuel, but uh, wonderful uh, play from uh, Togo to evade that pressure. Here they come once more. This time it's Denki on that far side. That's an ambitious shot from distance. Chaka from a long way out is a midfielder and shot from midfield there the man who scored the winner in the 1-0 win over Libya in an international friendly at the end of March in their last, his last outing Back out to the substitute, uh, Akbozo. It's going to be a free kick. Sambe was the man who uh, was uh, taken out there by Data. six times for his uh, Ugandan Premier League side NECFC this uh, season in his first campaign since coming in from Express <laughs> 29 minutes gone it is hot it is humid drinks break being taken There, Dupuis uh, just uh, giving his players 
little few words of advice. He must be quite happy, though, with what he's seen so far. Half an hour gone on the clock, and it's still nil-nil. Togo have begun, though, to impose themselves more. You see by the shirts just how humid it is. Paulo Duarte, 55-year-old Portuguese, who's the coach of uh, Togo. Even the referee is feeling it. So then, back underway again, then, half an hour gone, 15 minutes or so to go until the half-time. The only game in this group that's taking place today. Oh, that was almost into the path. There of Bebu. Denki trying to get forward as well. He's still the only man that scored in this uh, World Cup qualifying campaign. Salsa down on the attack though. And a rare excursion into the final third brings a corner. Ramal, the captain, forced into that clearance behind for the corner. 40 years old now, Jack Alexis Ramal. Last played in the international friendly win over Niger, away from home as well. He's not happy with what's going on in the middle with the jostling. Kevin Denki is one of those who's being talked to, as indeed is Azingbe. You can see their number six on the near post for this set piece. South Sudan then looking for their first goal in the group in the third match. Can't find it there though, and that's going to be a free kick to Togo and relieves that bit of pressure for the hosts. Tabam, the man who was penalised, the 21 year old, who has uh, spent four games on the bench before he appeared in World Cup qualifying. Against Senegal, South Sudan conceded four goals, but that wasn't such a surprise against the 2021 AFCON champions who made it to the last World Cup in 2022 as well after beating uh, Egypt in a, another penalty shootout, as they did in the AFCON final itself. In a tight group, Senegal still start off as the favourites to go through. It's just one place at the top that takes you to the next finals. Nice turn. However, a uh, good tackle as well. Mensa distributes quickly. Romal, evergreen centre foot back. Used to be a midfielder, has dropped back in position in recent years. Bozo gives the ball away. Well, one back though, in the middle by Domani. In by Neri. However, there were no yellow shirts in the middle of the penalty area. It's better. Nicely in. Denki trying to get through. Well, it was Azingbe who had the shot. Looking for his first international goal for Turnco. Got through really well. It's a little suspicion of handball, but he managed to beat his man. 
was a risky move as well by the goalkeeper. Another player might have aimed for his leg and claimed the penalty. Togo on the attack, though, forward again. And this time, Gennaro drops on it gratefully. Ten minutes to go until half-time. Still goalless here in Lomo, the capital of Togo. Lomo with a population around 800,000. Togo's not the biggest uh, of nations. Sansa down on the attack finally, though. This is a decent run. It's a good tackle, though. Referee is happy. Togo have it once more and trying to counter. Here's Azingbe. Nice move out, Demane. Azingbe has continued his run down the flank. And then he's stopped by Tua. At the expense of a corner. No, didn't even get the corner. It'll be a goal kick. Problem for Toha. He's on the deck. And off the back of the season with uh, Arua Hill in uh, Uganda. Not a head injury, so uh, the referee will be uh, talking with them and saying, well, he needs to get off the pitch if he wants to continue with his treatment. Well, a win today for either of these two sides. shoot them up into top position in the group. Well, South Sudan, if they win, they would join Senegal and Sudan on four points at the top. But if Togo win, then they would have a point more than the uh, current top two in the table. Way once more. Both the other four, or the other four teams in action tomorrow. Mauritania against Sudan at six o'clock, and uh, Senegal against Democratic Republic of Congo at nine o'clock. As Yang Bei. It's a little bit loose. Overall, they've been defending well of South Sudan so far as we almost get to five minutes from half time. So they've been restricted to just a couple of chances despite their domination in territory and in possession. Well won by Kuachuel. However, he's lost the ball immediately after Zingbei goes back, and uh, it'll be a throw into South Sudan. Slightly exasperated Togo player looks at the assistant. I think he felt that he was fouled. There's something that Data's going to worry about as he gets set for the throw in. Data now with a chance to cross it. 
took too long. Two balls on the pitch. Dutter is going to take another throw in. Leads it back into the path of Taban. Morgan trying to turn. Met a Togolese wall of resistance and uh, had to go backwards instead. Togo kind of left on the deck. The referee is uh, going to call on the trainer because it's a head injury. that they're putting on him. So he plays his football for a club side in Iraq. Togo moving forward once more with three minutes to go until the break. Ooh, that's a bit wild as a uh, cross and uh, what a waste. Every time they start to get a little bit of ground, Togo just unable to get that killer ball in that time. The mistake coming from Chakai, who had that long shot just a few moments ago from distance outside the area. 28 years old now. Only plays in the Liga Kuibara in Tanzania. That probably would be all right, it is. Taken well, it's a decent ball into the middle as well, the header coming from Kuat UL. Just didn't manage to get enough on it, and the goalkeeper's now going down, saying he's injured. It looks fine to me. One of the ugliest sides of football, to be honest with you. The exaggeration of injury. You can see it on his face, he's fine. Even the referee looks a little exasperated. There's too much of this in the uh, modern game. Referees always criticised for making wrong decisions, but players don't always help with their reactions to challenges. Agbozo beats it down the line and. Uh, Gets it back from Dumane. Another good move being generated, but a good tackle coming in from Chul. Still coming forward, though. Streams of yellow shirts coming forward for Togo. There's three then in the box, but the ball is not forthcoming. A few seconds to go with the 45 in the first half here in Lome. Togo dominant, particularly after an initial piece of parity in terms of play from South Sudan at the beginning of the half but Togo despite having more possession more territory unable to maximize their use of it they'll have a six more minutes though 
of this first half to try and find the opening goal. Gennaro, long for Sur Sudan. Togo again, though, pick it up and. Uh, Goes uh, Roger Aholu. Switch North African nations uh, the season that uh, has just gone. Played in uh, Morocco at Raja Casablanca for a couple of seasons before switching to Esperance in Tunisia for the current campaign. Corner kick to the home side. Minimum five minutes still to go of time added on at the end of the first half. In it comes from Neri. Too long for everybody, out by Data. Picked up by Damane, but he went underneath his foot, picks it up at the second attempt. Again, good pressing out by South Sudan and Togo unable to get that second phase of attack going. Romal, 40-year-old captain, feeds it forward to the substitute, Agbozo. Damani inside. Again, here they come. The crowd rise in anticipation once more. Again, no good defending from South Sudan, forcing Togo into those long shots, struggling to get past them into the box. Bozo again, inside, short ball. Forward by Chakai. Off of Loki on that far side, and Neri wants to take the throw in. I bet you he'll uh, leave that for somebody else in the end. Nope, he is going to take it himself. Here it is. Feeds it into the path of Bebu. One of two men in this uh, Togo starting lineup that plays and lives in Germany. One in the south, one in the north. It's the goalkeeper who plays in the north on the North Sea coast of Hamburg. In it comes from Agbozo. Oh, that was uh, loose. Agbozo again, though, picks it up and can't get it over the top of Jatta. That'll be a free kick. Jatta giving it away, dangerous position this, good play by Damani. 20-year-old midfielder who plays his club football in Belgium. One of those players who plays top-flight football in Europe, he plays for Courtrige. Picked up one goal as well in the uh, Jupiler Pro League. In his second season in Belgium after coming in from Feyenoord in the Netherlands. Slightly nervous looking goalkeeper Gennaro knows how dangerous this is. Chake with the responsibility of delivering it. Eight-year-old who scored three times for Togo. In it comes. Bends it looking for the back post and it goes just a foot or so wide. Just couldn't quite get enough curl, but it was a decent effort. Kick given against the substitute, Agbozo. Wasn't much of a push though, was it? Hello was the man who was just to have been fouled against. 
the South Sudan half winger. So then, not quite as dangerous this one, a bit further out, but nevertheless, a chance to deliver something from a set piece. In it comes from Kuachuel, deep, all dropped by the goalkeeper. And a chance for Maker, the captain of South Sudan at the back post. Togo escaping a real error there, right on the half-time whistle. Well, the delivery looked an easy one for the goalkeeper, but Mensa made a right mess of it. And we'll be very grateful the South Sudan couldn't capitalise right on half-time. And there is half-time in each of the groups. South Sudan then get us underway in the second half then. They were nil-nil in their last match to pick their first points up of the campaign after being beaten by Senegal early doors. Togo though, well they are looking to uh, keep their unbeaten run going. At the moment they will do that but I'm sure they won't see nil-nil as a good result against South Sudan. They will be looking to get a little bit more dividend out of the investment that they put in coming forward. That ball has gone out. Uh, Ramal has to uh, give it back to his uh, teammate, and uh, it'll be a South Sudan throw in. No, it won't. It'll be a Togo throw in. Where the Central African Republic are uh, in front against Chad. Whilst Namibia are also leading as well against Liberia. Togo on the attack early on in the second half here. First shot comes in from uh, Chaka, who had a chance in the first half as well, a half chance more than a chance to be fair. Be taken by Ahalou. Togo playing with three at the back. Ramal, Roma, Boma, and uh, Basile, who started, but he had to go off early in the 60th minute. Rozo came on to replace him. Demane, Chuskay, and Neri in midfield with Azengbe and uh, Ahalou on the flanks. Dengi and Bebu up front. Uh, Gennaro, the goalkeeper for South Sudan, has gone down early, complaining of a foul. And again, you can tell when a player is really injured because they don't explain to the referee why it hurts. Well, I mean, that was nothing. Togo have it back again, Neri. Trying to get to the baseline, he was Harry Doe very well. There by Lucky. And in the end, it meant that he conceded the goal kick. What's been written about uh, Togo and this latest generation of players? Certainly is a team that has talent, but uh, there are certain areas that are a source of concern for those watching. Lack of depth is one of them, particularly in midfield. Perhaps uh, with this in mind, the inclusion of several young players in the squad is a positive sign. Adel Tite, midfielder, and Thibaut Kilje, who's a little bit more of a forward-thinking player. three-match winning streak when they started World Cup qualifying. They were unbeaten in their previous four after a win over Lesotho. On the attack here, though, into the box and a chance for Bebu. Brilliant covering tackle. Coming in from the captain, Peter Maker. 
for South Sudan. It was a speculative ball forward at best, but the captain got himself into trouble by dawdling and then had to make up time to make the sliding challenge, which he did very well. Babu, the big threat, 30 years old, the Hoffenheim man, finishing the season in good form. Sudan immediately trying to break forward themselves. Picked up by Neri on that far side, and he does well. Free kick against Data. and it's gone and Togo on the attack once more that's uh, really nicely brought down there by Denki and he earns his side a corner from the challenge by Toa oh that's spectacular but uh, well I suppose that was a fairly predictable end to it Saying Namibia are in charge of their game at the moment. Group H has already seen its fair share of controversy with Equatorial Guinea stripped of their November wins over Namibia themselves and Liberia due to fielding an ineligible player. It meant that coming into today's action, Tunisia and Namibia were top of the table with six points apiece. Tunisia's Carthage Eagles now taking on the Enzalang Nacional. Looking to deal them a further blow, Equatorial Guinea that is, in Tunis today before taking on the Brave Warriors in Johannesburg in four days' time. Equatorial Guinea don't take playing against Tunisia until the late kickoff in a couple of hours' time. Good battle going on between Sierra Leone and Djibouti. That's taking place in Morocco on neutral territory. That's a group, Group A, that Egypt are top of the table with, with six points after wins over Djibouti and Sierra Leone in November. This is nice play from Togo. Denki. Look at all the green shirts, though, between them and the penalty area. Never mind the goal. That's a good ball, though, over the top of them. Now there's a chance. Good defending again, and Togo will have to make do with the corner. Well, it was well done in a nice overlap there, run from Azengbe. But South Sudan clearly well drilled by their French coach Dupuis. And they are managing to keep the hosts at bay. This is a match, really, that uh, Togo have to win if they're going to challenge at the top with the likes of Senegal and Sudan. They need something against South Sudan. Will they get it from this corner? Neri, all the way across, Charles, oh, it's off the line. Still not away. Demane still pinging around the penalty area. South Sudan's goal, living a charm life in that particular moment. Ahalu feeds it out wide. Chance again for Azingbe to, to, to maybe cross it in. Instead, it will be Demane who does it. Back post. Data heads it away, and it'll be a throw in to Togo. It's 
going to be Chakai who takes it. Looks long. And then takes it short, of course. Chakai again. This time does get a ball in. That's been rather miscued there by Toa. And he's given Ray a rather unnecessary corner. Another chance on the noise level inside the stadium. Goes up another octave. And another decibel, or two, or three, or five thousand. Neri, again, it's short. From outside the area, good shot. Saved by Gennaro. Chances coming are plenty at the beginning of the second half for Togo. But they still can't find the target or the back of the net. They're getting nearer, though. This is the first corner. This is the second corner, in fact. It's going to be Cheke this time who takes this latest set piece. The outswinger. And uh, finally, Azengbe can't control the volley back into the danger area. And Gennaro could go across and pick it up. Well, Togo have turned it up a notch or two in the opening ten minutes of the second half here in Lomé. But have still yet to find a way through this determined South Sudan defence. South Sudan seem more and more consigned to just defending. We saw it as the first half wore on and it's continued into the second. Tackle needed, though, by the captain, Romau. around as Ramal, heavily involved in France at Grenoble, Lorient, Marseille, where he spent four years, a little uh, trip to a couple of seasons in Olympiacos in Greece before returning to France and Rant and Gangon, and then back to Greece again, where he was with Enarchos and then Athens. Kind of there in the second division of Greek football. Still going strong, though into his fifth decade of life. Togo coming to life here at the beginning of the second half. Neri decides to send the ball in himself, but it's into the arms of Gennaro, who read that cross well. trying to break into the South Sudan side in competition with Ramadan Maik for the starting place. And the referee unhappy there with Boma. up. And the first yellow card of the game goes to Togo. Coming through the back of his man. The man who plays for Rodez in France. Although he spends more often than not time on the bench. Rodez's his last uh, match of the uh, Last season was against Saint-Étienne. Saint-Étienne going on to beat Metz in the uh, Ligue 1 playoff. And earn their position back up in Ligue 1. That's a free kick, goes harmlessly past the post. Rodez, meanwhile, will have to uh, try again in next season's second division in France. by Bebu. Out by Gennaro. Long ball that is uh, met by the substitute, Akbozo. Only seen one substitution so far. 
enforced by injury in the first half. Boma, back to his goalkeeper, Mensa. Mensa needs to get rid of it quickly. That was great pressing, forcing the Togo keeper into the rush clearance. And it's given uh, South Sudan an attacking throw in. Now we will see a substitution, though. On comes Waheb Gaddafi, then. Another man who plays for NECFC in Uganda. New name for uh, South Sudanese international football. Out it goes from Boma. Hour gone. Togo nil, South Sudan nil. I think a result that uh, South Sudan would definitely be more happy about than Togo. They would see this as a defeat, really. If they are going to catch up with the teams that are above them, they've got to beat the teams that are below them at the very least. Better. Togo on the attack, trying to find that little bit of an inch of space. Neri. Neri onto the left foot. Oh, that's a fabulous goal. And the opener is found after an hour here in Lomé. What a way to break the deadlock. The 29-year-old South Arabian-based player with an absolute steamer of a goal. Good set-up play. They were patient here as well. Didn't force it. Back onto the left foot. Togo's second goal in World Cup qualifying for 2026. And it's a first international goal for Khalid Neri, and one he will remember forever. I'm not saying anything, just letting you enjoy the crowd noise, the celebration. I would say it's changed the atmosphere, but it hasn't really changed the atmosphere at all. It's just augmented it. This crowd have been making a noise all the way through the first 60 minutes of this game. And now their support has been rewarded. Even when they were struggling through that first hour, crowd was 100% behind the side. There was no dissenting voices, no booing, no whistling. 100% behind their team. And now their team have the lead. And this changes everything in the group. In the virtual table, they're now top by a point from Senegal and Sudan. And now looking to make it even better. Thanks to Neri's first World Cup goal. Now we'll have to see how South Sudan, whether or not they can change their tactics and chase the game. Neri just across there on that far side, just uh, getting a little bit of uh, words of advice from the management. I think 
It's too hard getting uh, some attention on the ground. And all of a sudden, the uh, Togo uh, substitutes are a little bit keener to come on and make an appearance now that their team are in front. A real adrenaline boost for everybody in a yellow shirt. Whether they're on the pitch or in the crowd. Duarte, the coach, giving a few words of wisdom to Domane there, the midfielder. Toa back on his feet. And we're coming up to the 65-minute mark and, well, the first real moment of quality in the game. And we have our first goal. And now we're in for a, a really exciting last 25 minutes. Here is Neri, the goal scorer. Down the line into the path of Bebu. Bebu's trying to beat his man, and I think that's gone out. Well, that was good defending. Didn't give him any inch of space at all for being able to cross that ball, and it kind of forced him into the error in the end. Bebu and Denki regarded as the main threats up front, but it's a midfielder who's uh, broken the deadlock. Zingbe, by the way, has gone off and has been replaced by Laba. 32-year-old Kondro Laba. Who played in the first two games as well of this World Cup qualifying campaign. And also scored a couple of times in four appearances in the last Africa Cup of Nations qualifying campaign, which Togo didn't get through. South Sudan make a substitution as well, and on comes Paul Jower. He's a forward, so we're wondering how Monsieur Dupuy would react for South Sudan. Well, it's an attacking move. Second substitution for South Sudan. And uh, Togo have also made a couple of changes as well. Both of those changes came before they took the lead, first half. Agbozo coming on because of a injury to Basile. And then uh, Azengbe coming off in the 57th minute, replaced by Laba. South Sudan, let's not forget, are ranked 167th in the FIFA ranking, so uh, they were the 209th team to be admitted to the FIFA family. In they come with the uh, corner. Oh, it's gone in. I think it's an own goal. And South Sudan comes straight back into it, only moments after they went behind. Well, it's a horrible moment for Togo. It was a great delivery, though. Looks like it might be Ahalu. Diving header, but it was that sort of ball, which is an absolute nightmare for defenders between them and the goal. And Tuarte looks disgusted. And the lead lasted only six minutes. And now South Sudan are the ones who've been revitalized coming forward with Kuacha UL. And all of a sudden, Togo are reeling. Yeah, the goalkeeper Steven Mensah needs his side to buck up. Dangerous times this for Togo.
corner will be taken by Gaddafi. One of the two South Sudanese substitutes made in the second half. It comes in and is initially dealt with. Togo will now try to break. That's good tracking back, though, by Sudan, South Sudan. And it rather forced that uh, ill-thought-out ball forward. Just shows you how the air has changed inside the stadium. So we're back where we were then. South Sudan had been briefly relegated back down to bottom of the table, but they've now, they're back above Mauritania if they hold on to what they've got. Togo, who briefly went to the top of the table after that opening goal, now find themselves back down below Sudan and the leaders, Senegal. With 20 minutes to go, you can still feel the crowd debating what they've just seen. They were still talking about the goal that put them ahead, celebrating that, when all of a sudden, all of that celebration was sucked back out of their throats and be replaced by a rather unpleasant feeling in the stomachs. Throw by Lucky. Nicely played back by... Jawa. All of a sudden they've got a little bit of a spring in their step. Almost through Coet Joel. Nice play to take it on his chest. He just couldn't take enough of the power out of the cross to be able to be able to pounce on it when it landed. Here's Domene. Feeds it to Bebu. Goal scorer, Neri. And the tackle comes in from Maker. Nere will take the resulting throw in. No way through for Domene once more. Neri, though, is still out on the flag. That's a nice ball into the middle. Completely missed in the middle by the substitute Laba. 32 year old forward. Who's been in the Togo national setup since 2017? That'll be a free kick. Clever play, drawing the foul. Bebu, no way through down the right-hand side, so feeds it back to Boma, who sends the ball forward once more. Denki, trying to turn it on in the middle. Unable to quite get it together, though. Boma, once more, feeds it through to Bebu. This time there is a little bit of space for Neri to exploit down that right-hand side. He continues it going. That's going to be a free kick given away by Maker. Dumane was the man who was hit and flattened. usual it's quite going down as if he's just split his head open he's uh, back up again and perfectly all right and the referee didn't feel that that was worth a yellow card because of the reaction of the player that was fouled oh that uh, was uh, a little bit telegraph what was going to happen there from that set piece I'm not sure that the wall was entirely 10 meters back oh. 
Oh, another free kick. Clever again. Another set piece play. Togo beginning to show signs that they are getting over the shock of that equaliser and a yellow card comes out. Shown to Taban. Samuel Taban, only 21 years old, who is playing only his fourth appearance in a South Sudan shirt. Is there, is there a substitution coming here? No, there isn't. In comes the ball then. Just drifted away from the uh, Togo players in the middle. Neri. Damane goes down. Another free kick is given just outside the area. Dubane grabs his face there. He didn't look like uh, the foul went anywhere near to his face. And you see Toha is really upset about the decision of the foul for that and the free kick. Having to be escorted away by Loki, his teammate. Mensah lining up his uh, wall, or rather, Gennaro lining up his wall. Nere, back post, too far for everybody. You know, it seems a long time ago now since he was uh, acknowledging the crowd for his opener. Does well, finds Bebu. Oh my word! Almost an own goal by the South Sudan skipper Peter Maker. <laughs> well, he smiles about it now, but wow, that would have been some own goal. Be a corner kick then, which Chekai will take. There's a decent ball in. Oh, that's such a chance, and it's put wide. What an opportunity for Laba. Unchallenged, just didn't direct it. All he needed was on target. Far post was a good idea, but just put too much. Those are the sort of chances you cannot afford to waste. Togo, though, getting back to their assault on the South Sudan penalty area. If South Sudan come away with a point from this game, they will be ecstatic. He wants to make another substitution. He's going to bring on uh, Malish. 21-year-old midfielder, Joseph Malish. He's made half a dozen or so appearances with the national side in the last year or so. And uh, he comes on to replace Okello.
throw will be taken by Loki. And the ball inside, Chol trying to take it, but he's dis dispossessed. Nicely played by Nere, and that's lovely by Bebu, and now the attack is on, but a great covering challenge. There from Chol. However, Bebu's won it back again, and the attack continues. Nice ball out, Nere. I'd say so, well, there's nobody there. <laughs> Not quite sure what he saw inside him, but uh, there was no player in a yellow shirt. Here's Ahalu. Boom up forward. Nere again, back to the central defender. Ten minutes to go in what has become an absorbing third match in Group B in African World Cup qualifying is Togo 1, South Sudan 1. Togo for a while were top of the table. South Sudan were bottom. Now all of a sudden things have changed and they're both mid-table as a result of the 1-1 draw that it is at the moment. Bebu has come back and become an attacking midfielder more than a forward in this latter part of the second half. Almost a deep-lying uh, midfielder. Sort of quarterback role in a football sense. A little bit too fancy. And that's a good play by Nere. Honest play as well. He could have gone down there, but didn't. Oh, oh this might uh, be more dangerous than it first looked. It looked like he deeply overhit that cross, and it nearly turned into a shot. As it is, Juma Jenna was very happy to see that one float just a little bit high and a little bit wide. Inside the last nine minutes, South Sudan looking for a point would give them back-to-back -back games without defeat after that 4-0 hammering by Suda, by, by Senegal in the first match. However, Bebu lays it back. Little ball over the top. Nere again! Oh, he chose the cross rather than the shot. Still not away. Now the shot comes in and it's wide. They want a corner. But Shakai, who took the shot, is not going to get it. Chance is coming thick and fast. He hit it pretty well, actually. Through a crowd of players. Not sure that Gennaro would have been anywhere near it had that been on the far post, but he seemed pretty confident it was going wide. Oh, it's lovely play. Burst forward here by Kuachuel. However, he's managed to get the corner kick of the tackle by Boma. Oh, he hasn't managed to get it. Sapping heat and humidity. This is where it really hurts in these games. by Bebu. Again, nice play. Denki, that's a lovely little ball through. Bebu almost onto it. Juma Genardo anticipating it well and getting out quickly. Almost inch perfect. interesting it looks like the goalkeeper has managed to get cramp <laughs> unless it's not cramp he's holding on it's the wrong side perhaps maybe it's cramp it's not often you see a goalkeeper going down with that sort of an injury Duarte with a few urgent instructions for his players 
they're running out of time here at the end of a game which really they have to win Senegal and win both their games against Democratic Republic of Congo and Mauritania, then they will strengthen their grip on top spot. Togo, though, if Sudan also win both their games, could find themselves stranded away from that fight towards that World Cup place. Yeah, a little bit downcast at the moment, the home fans and the home team. It will change, though, inside this last five minutes. Fair play from Bebu, returns it to South Sudan, and they go long. In some senses, South Sudan just handed possession back to uh, their hosts. minutes of the match still 1-1 both the goals coming in the second half Nere who scored the first off them feeds it out wide into the substitute forward by Agbozu play by Bo Bebu there to uh, hold off the challenge keep it in uh, Togo possession Well, the better play in possession has come from Togo, but uh, South Sudan have done a resolute job in defence and have only been beaten once. They have uh, restricted Togo to well, a handful of chances that actually all came in the same period just before the goal. Own goal, though, handing it back again. Confirmed as Ahalu's own goal. Here comes Agbozo again. Speculative. It's been dropped by the goalkeeper. Out by Chol. And then given away by a rather distraught looking Ahuru. Meanwhile, Anor Yor is about to come on. Played 90 minutes in the friendly win over Niger. Towards the end of uh, March, having also played as a substitute against Senegal in the nil-nil draw in World Cup qualifying. It was a good result, that, that draw, but this one will not be viewed with the same kind of generosity. If it indeed remains a draw. South Sudan here have a free kick. Nerves here inside the last two minutes. South Sudan with a good opportunity to try and get something better than a point. The delivery is not great. However, they come back again and it's over the top. There from uh, Paul Jower. It was well dealt with originally, but they gave away possession in midfield instead of getting rid of it. And that allowed Jower in to take the shot. Still looking for his third goal in only his seventh international appearance. South Sudan on the attack once more. Kuac Yoel. There's nobody there. I think that might have been a shot. There wasn't really anything else on inside the box in terms of support. Last minute. The game just feels like it's lost its intensity a little bit since that equaliser.
Agbozo. That's a good ball forward. And he'll be in a corner. Well won by... Laba that time. Just to see how many minutes are added on at the end of this game. But at the moment, this is it for the 90. Inside the last 10 seconds of it. Late corner kick here for Togo. Can they find the winner? Not a bad ball in. And it's gone over. Chakai, I think, in the middle. Five minutes of time added on. They have already entered the first of them. where Liberia have equalised against Namibia and that's a draw which is not what Namibia needed bearing in mind they were at home they were in a draw at the top in their group Central African Republic are into time added on at the end of their match with Chad and are still leading 1-0 Sierra Leone are 2-1 up against Djibouti they're deep inside time added on all the games are there except for Namibia Liberia which has finished and that's gone way over the top Speculative effort, to say the least, uh, from South Sudan. Well, it's become Hail Mary territory now for both sides. Long, high balls from both. for one last chance here with three minutes to go of time added on Bebu trying to get it into the box however he couldn't get it past Joseph Malish however he has got a corner which Chakai is coming forward to take almost 20 years since they last qualified for their only World Cup appearance so far in 2006 in Germany. Cheke with the corner kick. Again, it's dealt with well. Brought down by Demerne. Cheke's remained forward. He'll send it in from a slightly deeper position. It's a better ball, though. Good defending in the middle. Bebu trying to go for it. Another great piece of defending. Still not away. And the shot comes in from Denki and is saved by Gennaro. No wonder the South Sudanese players are going to high-five their keeper. It's a great ball in. Agbozo with the header on. Bebu couldn't get the shot away. Agbozo then fed it to the other centre-forward. Throw-in comes in. Agbozo involved again. Shake this time doesn't quite get hold of the cross. Denki hasn't had much sight of goal in this game. He nearly managed to get the winner at the end of it. Long throw. Not a bad ball, that into the path of Qatul, who has been as dangerous as anybody in a South Sudan shirt today. Last minute of time added on, the minimum of five minutes that was added on by the referee. Hoiked away by Loki to see what South Sudan have on their minds. taken by Boma 
the throw in. Another speculative ball forward. Not able to do anything with it, and it's picked up by Chol. However, he's given the ball straight back to uh, Togo, and now they have another chance to come forward. Denki couldn't find his strike partner, Bebu. South Sudan have it once more. And in the end, Boma forced to do nothing more than put it into touch. And was the referee given that the other way? Well, the five minutes are up, and what's the referee doing? Oof. Well, there's blood coming out there of Toha's face. But it seems to be his leg that he's more worried about. And he's going to be carried off on a stretcher. He's been down a couple of times in the game. Let's hope it's not too bad. He's had a good game in the centre of defence alongside Taban. Maybe one last chance here for Togo. Bebu being well chaperoned. Further away from goal, and they've given the ball away. South Sudan now with a chance to come forward. Loki. Between the lines, good ball in. Forward again by Mara. And then uh, it falls apart once it gets inside the box. Boma forward. Long, high, hopeful. Back it comes again, and the referee blows, and it's disappointing.